Hi, and very welcome to Milkfish Chess channel. Hello, chess warriors! In this video, we're gonna see a game between Mikhail Tal and Orest Averkin. So, a very interesting game. Uh, Mikhail Tal is playing with the white pieces, and he, and he starts with uh, e4, c6 by Forest Averkin, so the Karokan defense. Mikhail Tal continues with d4, d5, knight c3, pawn takes, knight takes, and bishop to f5. So, this is the main variation the Karokan, so uh, knight to g3 and bishop to g6. Okay, here the most common move uh, is uh, h4, so this is really well played, uh, very often played nowadays. And after you play h4, black can play h6, and then you go uh, knight f3, so um, protecting this pawn first, because the idea is to play bishop to d3 later, so you protect the pawn first. Um, black can continue with e6, then you can push h5, so bishop goes back, and now bishop to d3. And after the exchange of bishops, this position is really um, equal, it's a very, uh, white is, is well developed, and um, white can continue with um, developing this bishop to f4, and then castling the, the queen side, and black will try to, to develop normally the those pieces, maybe queen to a5, and the game can, can go on this way, okay? But in this game, uh, Mikhail Tal didn't push a4, and he went for this line with bishop to c4, so that's a Tal move. Uh, he's already uh, making pressure here on, on f7, so, and let's see how this game goes on. So, um, Orest Avrakin continued with knight to f6, knight to f3, Knight b to d7 and castle. In a normal development. Uh, and e6 now, you want to develop this bishop so you can castle. Uh, and Mikhail Tau makes already an interesting move. Uh, knight to g5. And the idea of this move is to make this uh, maneuver to a3 and then to, a, to f4. Uh, so, already an interesting idea. Black pushes h6, uh, kicking this knight from here. You don't want to let Mikhail Tau. Knight to stay close to the spawn, so you kick it and you pray that he doesn't sacrifice the knight, uh, the knight now. So, uh, Forest Avrakin this time, I, I'm pretty sure he's praying, and uh, but of course, Mikhail you know, didn't sacrifice it yet. There is no, there is no point in doing this right now. But if uh, it's because it's Mikhail Tal playing, you never know. Okay? So, okay, knight to h3, uh, bishop to d6 and knight to f3. So he, he made an interesting maneuver and now you have another piece threatening on e6 and also your bishop is attacked. So uh, Orest Avrakin continued with bishop takes f4. Of course you're playing, imagine, let's come back here, imagine you're playing against me at all. You don't wanna, you don't wanna play like bishop to just retreat in the bishop. You don't wanna do that because then simply rook to e1 and now there is a triple pressure here on the spawn on e6 and I'm pretty sure that black would be super afraid of this move and would probably castle but then simply because it's tall move you already know the move so it's knight takes e6 sacrificing the knight and this is what probably Mikhail Tal would play so after taking and our rook takes and now you're threatening some nasty discoveries so king, king has to move from away from this diagonal so if to h8 and now you can simply take your piece back now with the rook and white is two pawns up and with a much better position okay so let's go back so after knight to, to f4 uh, you don't want to allow uh, Mikhail Tau to, to come with uh, combinations like that so simply bishop takes f4 and bishop takes f4 and all black castle and he is now uh, very happy that uh, he, he, he could put in his king in safety. So, okay, uh, what do we do now as white? So, Mikhail Tau continued with bishop to b3. So, uh, um, this piece, this bishop was hanging loose here, and also you want to block this uh, this column in, in case black plays 
queen to b6, you want to block this pawn, so he's not threatening the, this b2 pawn. So bishop to b3, a very prudent move. So Mikhail top plays it. Um, a very Bobby Fischer style move. That's, you, you can see Bobby Fischer making this move lots of times. So if Bobby Fischer plays it, and Mikhail Taro also plays it, then it's a good move. Uh, a5 and c4. Rook to e8, rook to e1, and queen to b6. c5, so now he creates, he lets a hole here on d5, but at the same time he, make, he creates a good spot for his bishop here. He's attacking the queen, so a good decision by, by Mikhail Tal, an interesting decision. Okay, queen has to move, and bishop to c2. Now, uh, this bishop is offering the trade. And Black accepts it, so he's playing against Mikhail Tau, and the less pieces Mikhail Tau has, it's the better. Uh, okay, so exchanging. And now b6, try to create some space. Bishop to d6, defending, and also restricting Black's moves. Uh, okay, so Black continues with a4, trying to get uh, some space on the queen side. And rook to c1, rook a to c1. So queen to b4. Uh, this, this. Uh, sorry, let's come back. Uh, now queen is attacking the pawn, so you have to defend this. So rook f, rook e to d1. Pawn takes. And now white can simply reca recapture here, but you don't want to let this very nice uh, row to this uh, black queen. So you first kick this queen from here. Now queen has to go back, and now you take the pawn. And this is pretty much an equal position. Um, uh, of course, now that white has only two pawn islands, and uh, black has three pawn islands, so and you have the bishop against the knight, so a bishop and knight against the knight. You can say that this is a little bit better for me, can you tell? Uh, but uh, still, you, you, you can't find a winning plan here. Now let's go on. So, black continues with. Rook to a5, now he can try to maneuver to, to b5 with this rook and pressure here on this backer pawn that is a weakness. So, uh, rook to d4, now also putting pressure on the black's weaknesses. So, instead of defending his own weakness, he starts to pressure black's weaknesses. Uh, rook to b5, now offering the exchange of pawns. So if white captures here, then black can capture here and with a very strong attack, so we don't want to allow that. So you first have to defend this pawn on b2. So rook to b1 defending, rook to a8. Okay, so now black is also uh, defending here. And uh, so now you, you, of course, white can take here, but uh, then he's going to lose the defense from this b2 pawn. And, it's really not a good decision to take this pawn now on, on, on a4. So let's see, for example, takes, uh, rook takes, and after queen takes, then black has really achieved a, a very nice position here. So you don't want to allow that. So instead, he played rook to c4, queen to a6, knight to, to b2, knight to d5. And knight to d4, now attacking the rook, so rook has to move. Rook to b7, and rook to c1, simply. Knight 7 to, to f6, and queen to e2. Just uh, holding this e4 square and putting the, the queen in a better, in a better position. Also, now uh, maybe threatening some discoveries in the future, so Mikhail Tau likes to, to create some some tactical chances, so maybe he can create something in the future. Okay, Black continues to... Ah, okay, so let's come back and move. He's also making pressure here on, on E6, and that's very Mikhail Tau-like style, and uh, <laughs> although there's nothing, really no threat here, no immediate threat, you don't wanna, you're playing against Mikhail Tau, so you never know. <laughs> that shows how, how afraid his opponents are when he starts to create some sacrificing ideas and, and his opponent just, uh, although there's nothing, really nothing, his opponent 
his opponent to defend it. Um, okay, bishop to e5. Okay, and knight to knight f to d7. Bishop to g3. And knight goes back to f6. Rook to c2. Okay, so now uh, offering the, the exchange of queens. Now queens are exchanged. And this rook is still guarding this big pawn. So knight to e7, bishop to d6, and knight to d5. And if you look at this position, this is pretty much equal. So this is very well balanced. And there's no way you can find a winning plan here for with the white pieces. But uh, Mikhail Tao just tried to improve the, his position, so he moves the king, uh, trying to get his king closer to this B2 pawn. So that's the only weakness, is, uh, only weakness that Mikhail Tao has now. And he's gonna, he's gonna improve his position. So rook to a8, rook to c4, rook to a6, and now the king comes. It's getting closer to b2. Okay, now the knight is attacking your bishop, you have to move your bishop if you want to keep him in the game. So bishop to g3, knight to e7, and king to d1. Now, getting closer to this pawn. So knight, knight to b5, and knight to e3. So, apparently Mikhail Tal doesn't want to exchange this knight. So knight e to c7. And king to c1. So now white has achieved the, his goal. Now his king is near to this b2 pawn, and I'm pretty sure that uh, Mikhail Tal is really happy now. Uh, although there again, there is no winning plan here for white. This is a pretty much a, a drawn position. But game goes on. F6. Rook to rook from c to e4. Now making a pressure here, although it's defended. And black could now play, could simply play e5 um, here and blocking this bishop and this bishop would be in trouble to get back on the game and this would be really a better position for black. So uh, black would be putting, would be restricting really the, the movements from the white pieces and black lost the chance to do this and he played now instead rook b to a7 and of course that uh, Mikhail Tal saw that and he saw that this bishop was really gonna be weak now so he, he decided to exchange this bishop for his knight so now he takes this bishop and now he takes the knight on c7 so there is another exchange and again this is really an equal position and a drawn position but, uh, Mikhail Tal continues playing so now he grabs this open column and e5 so now, if you're trading with uh, his rook, he goes there, and the other rook now is now defending this weak pawn here on the c5. So this this was kind of a forced move because Black is threatening to to play this knight on e6, attacking the rook and also attacking the pawn. So you have to make something in advance. So that's why we can't play the, this rook to c4. Now he's defending this pawn on c5. So now that uh, the knight was played on e6, attacking the rook and the pawn, now the pawn is defended by this rook. So you just have to move the rook on d8. So rook to d6 and rook to e7 defending the knight. Knight to e1, trying to find a better place for this knight. Knight to d4, knight to c2, offering the exchange of knights. Black doesn't accept it, so knight to b3 check. Rook to d1 and rook to a5 now making a lot of pressure on this uh, distant pawn on c5 he's distant from his fellows so he's a weakness now and letting this pawn so now white is a pawn up but this is really only temporary because this rook here is, is going to check his king now and he's going to d5 next move and with three attackers on the spawn and only two defenders, Black will be able to, to get back to this, this spawn, so that's how the game continues. He moves and now Rook to d5. And you, there is no way to save the spawn, so Black is gonna get back his material. So, Knight improves, attacking this Rook, but uh, the main point uh, about this Knight to the b4 is now that uh, this b2 pawn 
is going to be a weakness because it's a backer pawn. So this knight is really close in the way uh, to the rook. So he's closing this column, so this pawn is not going to be attacked. So that's the idea on knight to b4. Uh, and of course, he's threatening the, the rook on d5. So rook takes pawn, and after a few more exchanges, now, as you can see, this knight here is blocking this column, so the rook will, will never be able to, to, to attack this pawn on this open pawn, on this semi-open pawn. Okay, king to d2, king to uh, g6, improving the position of the kings, king to d4, uh, rook he goes to, to uh, b4, now pinning this knight, f3, king to f5, Rook to c7, attacking this pawn on g7. So king defends it. Rook to e7, not allowing f5. h5, h4. Rook to b8. And now white is gonna attack this uh, lone pawn here. So this is a lonely pawn, and uh, and it's a weakness. So white has to, to attack this weakness. So rook to e7. Although it's protected, you just want to keep pressure. So now this knight is kind of uh, locked here, defending this pawn all the time. So you cannot move the knight. Now. Okay, rook to b5, rook to a8, king to f5, just putting his king more in the center. Uh, rook to h8, attacking this pawn. So black has to defend this, c6. And now rook to c8. Uh, Attacking this knight, so this rook cannot leave this this rank. Uh, G5. So you don't want to to capture here. I mean, it's, it's better to it's restricting black's movement, so it's better to defend this with G3. And after exchange of pawns, then black plays knight to B6. Uh, probably trying to maneuver this knight to either F4 or D4. So a nice spot for for his knight and uh, improving the position. And in this position, it, it really seems that black is is doing fine. Here. Uh, it's, uh, white now has uh, three pawn islands also, and uh, so now black hat can start to attack those weaknesses here. And uh, that's what black's going to do now. But white instead of defending, he again goes for the weak pawns on, on black. Uh, so, and black allows white to take this pawn because he wants to play this rook to c4 and attack this h4 pawn and there is really no way to defend this and also uh, with this knight going to the attack he, he, just, he just have enough compensation for this pawn. So now white takes this pawn on a4 and black simply plays the rook to c4. Now he's attacking this pawn here and there is really no way uh, for white to defend this pawn. This uh, black pawn on h5 is really becoming dangerous, a dangerous, dangerous best pawn. And uh, rook can also, after taking this pawn, go to h3 and after knight to d4, make a pressure here on this pawn. And then black will have two best pawns. And really, black, black has really, it seems that black has winning chances here. So, in this position, uh, Mikhail Tau has. This knight is pinned, so this knight cannot move because then he loses the rook. But uh, Mikhail Tau played knight to d5. So, huh? What is going on? Uh, so, in this position, Oris Averkin playing with the black pieces, he, he warned uh, Mikhail Tau that now he's gonna lose his rook. So, he stopped the clock and probably uh, just to talk to Mikhail Tau now. And, and he probably offered uh, Mikhail Tal to take back this position. You know, it just there he's just a fair player, and uh, they are playing a very beautiful game. And probably uh, Orest Avrikin uh, offered a take back to Mikhail Tal, and uh, said, "Okay, you, you're just losing this game. I, I don't want to win this game so easily. Uh, I can simply grab your rook now, and this is going to be game over." So. Really, Mikhail Tau, I respect you. You, you, you know, you are an excellent player. So, I would just let you go, take back, and just choose another move. And um, so, in this position, Mikhail Tau just uh, smiled to him, and, uh, and then Oris Avrikin looked again at the chessboard, 
and he resigned the game. So why? You know, like why did he resign the game? So take another look at the chessboard, and um, this is pretty beautiful. So in case, uh, so now White is defending this h4 pawn, and case Black wants to grab this rook here. Can you find the next move? So if you're a Mikhail Tao now, and let's say that uh, he played this rook takes rook, what would you play now? I'm pretty sure that most of you are already are already seeing this move, and uh, if you if you have seen this move, congratulations! This is really a beautiful move, and uh, if you just want to enjoy the show, the, the move that uh, Mikhail Tao would pro would play in case the, the game continued this way would be uh, this knight to his side, and this is checkmate, a beautiful checkmate because his own pieces are restricting his king's movements. Uh, this, queen ca this, this king cannot go to g6, is guarded by this knight. Those, tr those two uh, squares here are covered by the king and the pawn. This is guarded by this pawn here, and this square is guarded by this pawn here. So as you can see, beautiful checkmate. And this is, this is just a, a position that only Mikhail Tao uh, could build in a chessboard because uh, he can checkmate the, the king in the center with only a knight and a few pawns and the end of king. So this is pretty awesome. Uh, so you're playing like the end game and there's only the knight uh, as a minor piece left on the board and, and he can checkmate the opponent's king. So this is just brilliant. Let's go back in the position where when um, Boris Avrakin resigned the game and it was exactly when Mikhail Tau played this knight to d5. So this is the final position of the game. Uh, Orest Avrikin resigned in this position. And uh, really, uh, as I said, only Mikhail Tau could build such a beautiful position on, on the chessboard. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this game. A very beautiful game from, from Mikhail Tau. If you liked the, this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, you can also subscribe to the channel so you can know when new videos are coming. And thank you so much for, uh, for your audience and see you next time.